Hi, physics. This is Miss Satterley. I'm going to talk about the first part of section 3.1, position and displacement. And then there is also a homework assignment that goes with this where you just have to calculate the uh, final position for a couple problems. Some different terms we're going to go over, origin, position, and displacement. Okay, the equation for this section is xf equals xi plus d. So xf is your final position, and the way you calculate your final position is depending on your initial position, which is represented by xi, and also your displacements. Now, so what you'll do is you'll actually add your displacements to your xi. So you're going to add your displacements, however many you have. You can have d1, d2, d3, and so on in order to find your final position. So describing motion. Before you can predict an object's motion, you have to be able to describe it. And what that includes is the position of it. You have to have an origin. So if an object moves, what's the difference between its distance and displacement? Okay, so what is the difference between distance and position? So distance is always going to be positive, and it doesn't tell you where you are because it has no directional information. Position is going to tell you where you're at because it's going to give you a direction, and it's going to show you where you're at in relation to your surroundings. But what is the difference between distance and displacement? So displacement is a change in position that includes direction. But displacement is going to tell you what direction. So distance is going to be walking four meters, but displacement is going to say walking four meters to the north. So you have to have a direction in order to have a displacement. So again, back to the position equation. How is position described? So the final position, which is xf, equals the initial position plus any of your displacements. In order to determine your movement or your final position, you have to have something called an origin. An origin is going to be where everything starts. So it's a fixed reference point that you use. Now, when you calculate certain things or uh, one of the activities that we'll do later this week or next week, it's going to actually have you come up with an origin in order to do the problem. Now, traditionally, an origin when you're using an xy plane is going to be 0, 0 because it's easier to work with. But that's not always the case. It doesn't have to be 0, 0. So if we're talking about position on Earth, we have something called global positioning system that will calculate the location of an individual as long as they have a GPS on Earth. And it's based on latitude and longitude lines. Now, latitude lines are going to be, they start at the equator, which is the very center of the Earth, um, and that represents zero latitude lines, and it goes up or down, either north or south. Now, longitude lines start at the prime meridian, and the prime meridian is an arbitrary line that was created that runs through Greenwich, England, and that represents zero degrees longitude, and then you go either to the east or the west. So that is how... GPS is going to work. So it's actually going to use a whole bunch of satellites up in the sky that are going to triangulate your location. So position. Position tells you where you are relative to an origin. Position and negative values tell you whether you're front or behind or left or the right. So if you're talking about an XY plane, if you're moving positive direction. You're either moving to the right if you're on the x-axis or you're moving up on the y-axis. Now if you have a negative value, that means you're moving to the left on the x or you're moving down on the y-axis. So that's how uh, that'll come into play later on. So how is displacement described? Your uh, final position equals the initial position plus any of your movements. To describe displacement, you must create a coordinate system and choose which direction is positive and which is negative. This is a choice. It may change with different problems. Now, traditionally, it has set values. So right and east is positive, while left and west are going to be negative on the x-plane. Now the y, north and up are positive, and south and down are negative. So that is values that were given to show you what direction you're moving based on 
either a plus or minus sign. So displacement is a change in position. Positive and negative values indicate the direction of movement. So in the picture here, the start is at negative 20 and it ends up at zero. So that means there's actually a positive displacement of 20 meters because it's moving 20 to the right. Displacement is a vector. Now the next lesson, which I'll post tomorrow, is going to talk about vectors and scalar quantities. Vector quantities are gonna have a direction with their magnitude, while a scalar quantity is just a magnitude or just a value. So it contains directional information. For motion along a line, direction is positive or negative. Distance is a scalar. So distance is actually 10 meters in this example because it's not including directional information. Adding displacements. So let's do a practice problem to show how we add displacements. So the initial position is 2.0 meters, so that's your xi. An ant starts at 2 meters and crawls forward 7.1 meters, then turns around and crawls back 5.5 meters. What is the ant's final position? So the first thing you need to determine is what of your values that you're given are positive and which ones are negative. Crawls forward. So we're going to say forward is going to be positive. So we have uh, 2 meters. It's going to be plus 7.1 meters. Then turns around and crawls back. We're going to give that a negative value. So minus 5.5 meters. So what is the ant's final position? So you have to calculate this and you just do uh, basic math with that. And my final answer after calculating is going to be 3.6 meters. Now let's see how we did. Okay, so adding displacements graphically by drawing vectors to scale, that's one way that you can add displacements. The first vector starts at the initial, second starts at the end of the first. So we did that, you can see D1 is a positive 7.1, which we gave, and D2 is a negative 5.5, which we also said. And then our final position right there is 3.6. And you can do this with numerical addition, which is going to be the faster and more accurate way to do this instead of drawing the picture on an actual line graph. So over to the side, we have 2.0 plus 7.1 minus 5.5 equals 3.6 meters. So problem solving, let's do a couple examples and then we will wrap this up for today. So how do you recognize the initial position and displacements? So here's our example. A boat sails 50 kilometers north and then 800 kilometers south. What is the sailboat's final position? So what do you choose as your initial position? So as I said earlier, the best choice is going to be letting your initial position just be zero, and it cuts back or down on extra math. So our xi will be zero. When nothing is said to establish a particular start, you may assume the initial position is zero. So always do that, don't give it a value. Now, what are the displacements? So we have two, we have a positive 50 kilometers, and we have a negative 800 because 50 is going to the north, which has a positive value, while 800 is going to the south, which has a negative value. So what is the final position? Displacements are movements, so words such as move, sail, run, and travel are clues to let you know what direction you're moving. So the final position, we're going to use our equation, xf equals xi plus d. Well, we have two d's, so we're going to have d1 plus d2. So our initial position is zero. That's going to be plus 50 minus 800 kilometers. So our final answer is going to be a negative 750 kilometers, or since we need a direction, it'll be 750 kilometers south. So that is just an example of how to do a displacement problem. I have some problems in a Google Doc that I would like you to do after listening to this lecture. Make sure you actually listen and watch the lecture first. If you have any questions, please let me know. Have a great day. Bye.